It's time to release the Kraken. Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's time to start getting catch up with recent news in the National Hockey League as we head into the NHL Answer Draft. But in this video, I'm going to talk and recap the expansion draft that happened the other day with the Seattle Kraken. As the lists were all coming out, and I definitely made a few videos talking about what my team, the Calgary Flames, should do, and ultimately did what I figured they were going to do, and ultimately the player that we lost. But I'm going to look at this whole draft overall. So before I get into the recap, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. But the uh, Seattle Kraken definitely have a tall task to try to follow up with what the Vegas Golden Knights did four years ago on building out their team. And keep in mind, in this expansion draft, you're picking out players to at least initially build out your team. Some of these players, and they have indeed with one case, flip it for some assets in the future. But Seattle definitely took a different approach as they definitely looked more on building up their team and trying to stay relatively well under the salary cap to earn themselves for picking up some more prospects or assets and be a bigger player in Freeze Frenzy. It's enough of the teeing this up. Let's bring out the link here that talks about ultimately who the Seattle Kraken picked in the Spanish draft and I did watch the draft and the production they had that they had it at the Gasworks Park in Seattle, Washington. Definitely looked like a nice place to uh, hang out to check out the city. Definitely unlike here in Calgary right now where we're dealing with the wildfire smoke. It looked like a nice clear or clearest bluish day just like the Seattle Kraken colors so definitely was a nice view but uh, what they did is they drafted players in order by division. So the last division was actually the Pacific Division where the Seattle Kraken is going to play. So first they started off in the Atlantic Division as they were going in alphabetic order. So I guess you could say the first official official pick the Seattle Kraken made was Jeremy Lozon, a defenseman from the Boston Bruins. And when I looked at a lot of these players that eventually got picked and you can also say it was somewhat anticlimactic because a lot of players were leaked out on who was going to be picked in this draft. I mean, I guess ultimately, you know, the case of a lot of these players, they're knowing the day before that, yeah, we're going to take you in the expansion draft. And the case of some of the players, and there were six players that were actually physically present at the expansion draft. So I'm going to say those six players for sure are going to be on the opening night roster because you're not going to, you know, bring someone into Seattle where your gear and say, hey, this is so-and-so to the fan base. And also I understand that the, after the expense draft, some of these players were picked or showcased at a Seattle Mariners game. So take a word. And I would say those jerseys definitely look nice. I actually like the white one a little more. So, and that's also why a lot of these players were leaked out. So we kind of knew who got picked, but there were a few mysteries, and I kind of liked how they, you know, brought in, you know, Kevin Weeks, different parts of the city, and some Seattle sports legends. So getting back to the draft, I mean, Jeremy Lozon was the first one picked, and a lot of these players were in the young to mid 20s, so they have to have a lot of younger players. And then after I recap, we'll talk about uh, why some other big names were not picked. So the next pick from the Buffalo Sabres, which was very slim pickings based on the who was available, was defenseman Will Borgen. And no surprise that defenseman definitely was focused given that Ron Francis is the general manager and he was the general manager of the Carolina Hurricanes and definitely built out their defensive core. So the third pick, still in the line division. This one I don't think was leaked out, was def another defenseman from the Detroit Red Wings in Dennis Chalowski, and I think this pick they revealed in the Seattle Aquarium. Finally, they used the octopus to eventually reveal it. 
because of Detroit's known for octopus. I wonder what Detroit and Seattle games could be like. Are they going to be throwing Kraken and octopus on the ice? But uh, that is what it is. But uh, you know, just to make a production value. And then the f next uh, pick, and actually, this is a player that was signed to a new contract from the Florida Panthers. Goaltender Chris Drieger, and he was there at the Spanish draft as they brought him out, saying we signed him. I understand it was a three-year deal that is ten and a half million dollars for the term of the contract. So some of the players that were either pending free agents, and there were definitely were a few players that were signed that that was the pick that they got from that team. So Chris Drieger is looks on right now as of this recording. Heading into the entry draft, this could be their starting goalie, Chris Drieger. He definitely posted up some pressing numbers in this short sample size that he has with the Florida Panthers. So he was actually there. And then the fifth pick, still in the Atlantic Division, they picked defenseman Cale Fleury from the Montreal Canadiens. And then the sixth pick is still another goalie. This time they picked goaltender Joey Decord. From the Ottawa Senators, Ottawa definitely went through a lot of goalies this past season due to injuries. And the fact that they picked a younger goalie, and it was Philip Gustafson that ultimately was protected by the Ottawa Senators, because I figured if he was available, Ottawa might have decided, or Seattle would have picked him from Ottawa, because Matt Murray was exposed. Even though he has the two Stanley Cups that he had as a rookie with the Pittsburgh Penguins, ultimately you got to factor in salary cap to build out the team and likely, you know, potentially flipping for an asset. So that's what the direction that the Seattle Kraken is. And I'm going to say one of the first big names that you could say would be on the Seattle Kraken is the Tampa Bay Lightning pick was the center left wing in Yanni Gord. So Yanni Gord is going to the Seattle Kraken, definitely going all the way across the continent diagonally from Tampa Bay to Seattle. So I'm going to say that's definitely going to be one of their top six forwards, looking at Yanni Gord and the fact that he's got two Stanley Cup rings. And then the last pick that they got from the Atlantic Division, which briefly was a Toronto Maple Leaf in terms of prospect, or a player should say, but it was a Seattle or a Pittsburgh Penguin originally, and the Toronto and Pittsburgh made a trade to either try to protect Alex Kerfoot or plan on losing Alex Kerfoot is left wing center in Jared McCann. So Jared McCann definitely was not a Toronto Maple Leaf for long, as it was just before the roster freeze. He got traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it sounded like it was either going to be him or Alex Kerfoot that was likely going to be the Toronto Maple Leafs pick. So they elected to go with Jared McCann, and I know he has some experience playing with Crosby and Malkin, so maybe he can find some chemistry in their new top six right there. So that was the Atlantic Division picks for the Seattle Kraken. So now if we move over to the Metropolitan Division, and the first pick was the Carolina Hurricanes. I know that the host, they mistakenly said the Carolina Panthers, but it's the Carolina Hurricanes. I know that that got, got picked out. But they elected to go with right wing center in Morgan Geeky, which was somewhat a surprise. I know another bigger name that was on the Hurricanes available list is uh, is a Nito Nito rider. Some mock drafts had him. And I know that uh, Dougie Hamilton was also available as a free agent, but you had to sign him to a new contract in order to make that your pick, like the case with the Chris Drieger for the Florida Panthers. But uh, they elected to go with Morgan Geeky, another player that uh, is in the mid-20s, and I think Ron Francis is familiar with him because of his time with Carolina. And then moving down from the Columbus Blue Jackets, they definitely drafted another defenseman in Gavin Bayreuther. So not as familiar with with that uh, player, but uh, I mean, a lot of these are younger players that have a few games under their belt. There's a few, obviously, bigger names that uh, we'll touch upon that the Santa Kraken has drafted that they can market to run. So the next pick was from the New Jersey Devils. They picked a right winger in Nathan Bastin. So 
that's another younger player. And then I'm going to say the next player, going from the New York Islanders, that we could say is one of the bigger names for the Seattle Kraken initially, and was present at the expense draft, is right winger in Jordan Everly. Both Jordan Everly and, and Josh Bailey were available for the expense draft in terms of forwards from the New York Islanders. Bigger was either him or Everly that were going to be picked. But Jordan Ebley ultimately is off to the Seattle Kraken. So that's going to be another player that uh, they can market around. And then I think, you know, another player that I think Kraken fans will definitely like from the other New York team, the New York Rangers. They drafted Colin Blackwell, the center. More as a versatile bottom six grinder center who has some upside. So Colin Blackwell. And then continue on still with the Metropolitan Division, the Philadelphia Flyers pick was left winger Carson Tawanski and then another left winger which uh, you could say was a meme last year was left winger from the Pittsburgh Penguins in Brandon Tanev with his mugshot where he looked stunned he said he saw a ghost at the time and his picture's taken but uh, another thing that's going to be interesting with that is and he was also present at the expense draft as yes he is the brother of Chris Tanev who play, now plays for the Calgary Flames we're going to see a lot more Tanevs out here in the Pacific Division. Now that Brandon Tanev, and I'm going to say he's another versatile forward. I'm going to say he is just like Chris Tanev, not only with just his hair, but just how versatile and how hard nose he plays. But he's a forward while Chris Tanev here in Calgary is a defenseman. And then to wrap up the Metropolitan Division, the Washington Capitals pick was the goaltender Vitek Vanacek, who definitely stepped in and played some time last season, especially, you know, with Ilya Samsonov had injury. So I'm going to say the Seattle Kraken, based on what they're picked so far with their goal tenure, that they have Vitek Vanacek, Chris Trigger, and Joey Decord. In terms of their trio of goalies that they selected, and it didn't cost them as much because uh, another goalie that definitely was available was Carey Price. And as tempting as Curry Price was available, and you can ultimately say the general manager, Mark Bergeron, definitely trolled the system where he was trying to not lose Jake Allen. So he's like, well, we'll expose Curry Price. Thinking that, well, if they take him, that's a huge cap hit. And there were definitely a lot of uh, players that were available that would has a bigger, bigger name that you can market around. But the fact that you had to deal with the cap hit I know that a few years ago, Jeff Stinger would have been another player that would have been more desirable, but not for a $9 million cap hit who wasn't as productive with the Buffalo Sabres. But that's all for the Eastern Conference on the players that the Seattle Kraken picked. So now if we shift our focus to the Western Conference and now in the Central Division, and now remember that with the Seattle Kraken now joining the Pacific Division, the Arizona Coyotes are now in the Central Division, and with their pick, they picked center in Tyler Pitlick. And actually, he was not uh, an Arizona Coyote for long, and there actually there were no side deals that were announced. In terms of, you know, you pick this player instead, but we'll give you draft picks and players. Well, ultimately, Tyler Pitlick, which I'll talk about in a separate video, because uh, I definitely have some interest in... What the Seattle Kraken is, they actually ultimately, the next day after selecting him, they traded him to the Calgary Flames, so I'll make that in a separate video. But Tyler Picklick at the time was available from the Arizona Coyotes, was the Seattle Kraken pick. And then the next player they picked from the Chicago Blackhawks is center John Quinville, who actually is related to uh, Joe Quinville and his family. So that was the pick from the Chicago Blackhawks. And then the next player was a right winger from the Colorado Avalanche, and Jonas Donskoy. Definitely more familiar with, remember him more when he played with the San Jose Sharks than he was on the 2016 team. This would be another player that I'm going to say could be on their top six or top line, especially with Yanni Gord as well and Jordan Eberle. But Jonas Donskoy definitely has benefited from playing with uh, Gabriel Lanskog. And again, and speaking of Gabriel Lanskog, he was also available in the expansion draft because he has not signed a contract yet with the Colorado Avalanche, but you had to sign him 
and make him your pick. If you're going to take him in the Spanish draft and the fact that Seattle had exclusive rights to talk to potential free agents. Well, speaking of that, the next pick came from the Dallas Stars is defenseman Jamie Alexiak. He did sign a new contract with the Seattle Kraken, so he represents the Dallas Stars. And I'm always going to remember Jamie Alexiak not only for being a solid you know, defenseman overall that fills out the bottom six, but the last name might be familiar as of now we're starting in the final of the Summer Olympics. He is related. He is the brother of Penny Alexiak, the swimmer for Canada. But the deal that Jamie Alexiak signed with the Seattle Kraken was a five-year deal. That was with a cap hit of $4.6 million for five years. So Jamie Alexiak, I'm going to say he was going to round out either the top four or be in the bottom part a pair of defensemen for the Seattle Kraken. Has experience with the Dallas Stars on two occasions, and he also played with the the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, as I meant to say. So we'll continue on in the Central Division for picks for the Seattle Kraken. The Minnesota Wild pick was defenseman in Carson Soucy. And then another pick was uh, right winger going to the Nashville Predators in Kiel Youngcork. I know that uh, they definitely didn't pick uh, Matt Duchesne for the cap hit. And then speaking of cap hit, the next pick was defenseman Vince Dunn from the St. Louis Blues. Another player that potentially was available is Vladimir Tarasenko, as he already expressed he wanted to get out of St. Louis. But uh, it's once again the cap hit. So Vince Dunn, and there was also apparently rumors that uh, Seattle was going to take Vladimir Tarasenko and then trade him right after, but that has not happened. So Vince Dunn, another defenseman that... Uh, and was also part of the Stanley Cup team that won in 2019. Then the last player that they picked in the Central Division, which was not a surprise, it was either this player or Dylan DeMello from the Winnipeg Jets. They selected center Mason Appleton, who was definitely a very versatile center that uh, I'm going to say Jet fans might miss him, but they had other players that they had to expose, which that's the beauty with the expansion drafts now is there's more intrigue because... Remember when we, you know, the Minnesota Wild, the Atlanta Thrashers, and even going back to the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Auto Centers when they were expansion teams, as well as the San Jose Sharks, players that were available were just basically fringe NHLers or four-string goalies. So they definitely made that a lot more favorable for expansion teams. Well, I guess if you need $650 million, you U.S. to get a team, you want to have a half-decent team right away, and I'm going to say they definitely took a different approach compared to the Vegas Golden Knights. Just how they presented it and the fact that uh, they picked a different approach in terms of not going necessarily for the biggest, biggest names, but uh, trying to look ahead in the future with cap space and maybe still potentially flipping these players because you got 30 NHL players. They're all not going to be on the opening day roster. And so if Seattle's going to be a bigger play at the expansion draft as well as free agent frenzy. So the last division was the Pacific Division, which these are all rivals that will be with the Seattle Kraken. First starting off with the Anaheim Ducks, they drafted defenseman Hayden Fleury for the Anaheim Ducks, and he is a brother of Caden Fleury. So both Fleury's, no relation to Theron or Mark Andre. It's a different Fleury for this family. So they're both going to be on the same team. So you got both young Flurries, they can market around that. Hayden Flurry, and I think yeah, it was Hayden Flurry that was at the uh, when the Flurry, yeah, it was Hayden Flurry that was at the expansion draft in person. He was talking about that they have haven't played each other on the same team since they were childhood. So be a thrill here. And then the next pick, definitely, I'm gonna say is one of the biggest names. Definitely hits home here in Calgary. We kind of knew it was going to happen is you can might say could be the first captain. The Calgary Flames pick was Mark Giordano and I mean it was worth the risk and the Calgary Flames had to expose Mark Giordano given the rules and who we weren't willing to lose if we were to protect Mark Giordano and the fact that the Calgary Flames tried to make a side deal but the price would have been too high but Mark Giordano is going to the Seattle Kraken and yes he was at the expansion draft it definitely looked strange seeing Mark Giordano 
not wearing red with the red flame C, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But then another interesting player that uh, the Hamilton Oilers pick was defenseman Adam Larson, and he was one of those players that got signed to be the Hamilton Oilers pick. And when it comes to uh, the cap it, actually Adam Larson signed a four-year deal worth four million dollars. So I'm going to say that's a pretty good deal for the. Seattle Kraken, so I'm going to say the top two defensemen for the Seattle Kraken would be Mark Giordano and Adam Larson. So he got the Battle of Alberta as your top two pair right away on the Seattle Kraken. So that would be interesting to see. And then the last three picks for the uh, Seattle Kraken to round out the Pacific Division. Well, the, the Los Angeles Kings was defenseman Curtis McDermott. I also thought maybe Brendan Lemieux could have been another player that they could have picked, but they were looking at the salary cap. And then the second last player was center Alexander True, center for the San Jose Sharks. Wasn't as familiar with Alexander True, but I believe when I saw the bio on the expansion draft, I actually will take a look. Did he play junior hockey? Where did he play his junior hockey? Because I think it was actually close to home. And if you're looking at his career stats, spare with me. Yes, he did play with the Seattle Thunderbirds, so that was one player that uh, definitely would be familiar with the hockey fans in the Seattle market, as Alexander True did play for the Seattle Thunderbirds in the Western Hockey League before the NHL days. And then I guess you could say the official, official last pick, which you can say will probably be the biggest rival for the Seattle Kraken, is the Vancouver Canucks, and it was right winger in Cole Lynn. So those are all the your initial picks for the Seattle Kraken, for the 30 players that they selected from all 30 teams. Vegas was exempt, as I think that was part of the deal when Vegas got in that uh, with the $500 million it cost for Vegas to, in expansion fees, that they were not going to be able to uh, participate, and probably a good thing, because they had a couple more picks and prospects in Vegas. What made them successful in the expansion draft was well, obviously the players they picked, but then it's what they did with those players after, in terms of flipping them, after they picked them, flipped them for assets. In terms of draft picks, or any players right now, there were definitely there were a lot more side deals that were made, because there weren't any there weren't any trades announced in the expansion draft like the Seattle Kraken did, compared to the Vegas Golden Knights, where there were a lot more concessions and side deals that were made. Thought maybe there were side deals that were made given some of the names that were picked, but no. And ultimately, those are the players picked. I mean, guys like Vibe, Arturi Sanko, Kerry Price were available, for example, Gabriel Lanniskog, but Seattle definitely did not want to, uh, you know, max out their cap space right away. And I know one of the rules was is that you wanted your cap space to at least be 60% of. $81.5 million, which is going to be the salary cap for the next couple seasons. Well, after all those picks, the Seattle Kraken actually still had $28 million in cap space still to play with, so they can be a bigger play to potentially be a bigger play in free agent frenzy, as well as maybe flip some of those picks or that they made in the expansion draft for assets right now. And then maybe still some of those uh, bigger names that teams are like to get like to get rid of. Like for example, let's say the Tampa Bay Lightning still they still like to you know get Tyler Johnson off their hands. That could still be happen to be revisited. But looking at the Seattle Kraken, they took a definitely a different approach. Picked younger players. They tried to find the best value, especially when it comes to net. It looks like Chris Drieger is going to be their starting goalie to start this first season with uh, Vitek Vanacek. And then Joey Decor to be their third stringer. But what do you think of the initial picks that the Seattle Kraken made? And of course, you know, the players that they showcased. At the expansion draft, I'm definitely going to say those are going to be the players that are going to market round that were available. They're not going to, you know, invite them to come to Seattle to uh, show the fans and, the, you know, the guys parked there. They'll only trade them the next day, which, I mean, of course, uh, I mean, as a Flames fan, we have to say, Goodbye to Mark Giordano, but I'll talk about that more in depth in a separate video. But uh, I just say, what do you think of Seattle did? And of course, you know, being a Calgary Flames fan, I had a little more investment, especially when it came to the Vegas Golden Knights, 
what they did, and ultimately they went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, and we'll see what Seattle does, especially now with the entry draft, for age of frenzy, and maybe any off-season moves, while well, they, like I said, one of the picks that they made when it comes to Tyler Pitlick, they traded him to the Calgary Flames, so I'll talk about that in a separate video as well, what I feel about that, but uh, ultimately this is a divisional rival, this is going to be a rival for the Calgary Flames, I mean, I've been hearing mixed opinions of what People said what Seattle did, or I saw a tweet about, well, gee, or the leftover team shouldn't be better than the actual team, but I think that leftover team that you saw that someone put together with 30 picks, I think that would have been over the salary cap, which you can be allowed to be 10% over the salary cap in the offseason, but then eventually you got to make some trades, and that would handcuff them a little more. But uh, this, is, this is the initial picks. This is just to start it off. you got the draft class. And, you know, teams are probably still going to call Seattle saying, hey, do you still want to take the stinky contract while throwing a couple picks? So Seattle put that to your advantage. So anyways, I'd like to say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, home the Flames hit and rough next to Stan Peters, and now a new rival for the Seattle Kraken. I mostly do talk Calgary sports, recap games and stories. And being a hockey fan, I had to give my take and feeling on uh, what the Seattle Kraken did in their expansion draft, but I also do a variety of non-sports content on a chance, like personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and do share experience sim on the road or a sporting event, and I've done some vlogging on the go, but I think the next couple months are going to be a lot more busier now that we're in the NHL offseason. The expansion draft's been done. The entry draft is about to come up in the next couple days, so I'll do a video recapping from a California's point of view what they did at the expansion draft, who they drafted, or any trades they made, and then free agent frenzy. And that's just with NHL and Calgary Flames, but now with the season starting soon in the CFL and the Calgary Stampeders. So I think I'm going to be busier with that in the next couple months. So as I say, if that all sounds like the interest to watch, to follow along in this Calgary sports fans journey, you know what you do? Just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I also have my other social links down in the description below. So we could say, release the Kraken. I would say with all these picks, who do you think is going to be the first captain of the Seattle Kraken? Will they take the same approach they did with Vegas that no one was officially named the captain, but uh, I think Mark Giordano might be the captain, and he might, you know, say at the Seattle Kraken home opener to release the Kraken as they come out. So I still just want to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. There's going to definitely be a few more of those in a shorter time. Now it's the weekend and there's more stuff to talk about. So I'll see you then.